Hello, in this video I'm going to demonstrate a couple examples of how you can use the square root method to solve quadratic functions. Now this idea of using the square root method is most useful when the equation is in vertex form. Looking at the two examples that I have below, it's probably easy to see that this second one has the vertex at negative 7 comma negative 3. The first problem, the vertex might be sort of stumping you for just a second because you don't see the parentheses around the x squared quantity. So here the vertex is just at 0 comma negative 32. All right, well, this is just a little bit of preliminary information, but you don't need it for what we're trying to do in this screencast, which is solving equations in vertex form using the square root method. So let's go ahead and try to do that. What we're going to do is start with number 1, and we're going to add 32 to both sides. So 2x squared is now equal to 32 in this equation. And we can divide both sides by 2. x squared is then equal to 16. And this means then if I take the square root of both sides, so that's where the name square root method comes from, I'm going to have x equals plus or minus the square root of 16. Because both x equal to 4 and x equal to negative 4, when I square it, results in positive 16. So it's very important that you don't forget the square root means that you need to use plus or minus. Don't forget. OK. So now let's move on to this second problem. All right, my don't forget is kind of getting in the way, so I'm going to erase it. Make sure you put a note of that, though, in your notes yourself. So looking at this second problem, I have this 1 half and this minus 3 that's in the way of the x plus 7 squared. So I want to get rid of everything surrounding that x plus 7 squared, move it to the other side before I take the square root. So my first step is going to be add 3 to both sides. I get then that 1 half times the quantity of x plus 7 squared is equal to 3. Now to get rid of this 1 half out front, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2, and multiply 3 by 2 on the right side. And I'm going to get that x plus 7 squared is equal to 3 times 2, which is 6. Now, I need to take the square root of both sides. So again, taking that square root means that we need the plus or minus. So x plus 7 equals plus or minus the square root of 6. 6 is not a perfect square. So to reduce the square root of 6, I would need to go to decimal form. If you have a calculator, you could do that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as the radical 6. So to, s final, to get my final solution of x, I need to subtract 7 from both sides. And I get that x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 6. That's my final answer. Now, this may look like you just found one solution for x, but being a clever mathematician, you can recognize that that plus or minus means that there's actually two solutions. We have that negative 7 plus 6, the square root of 6, is equal to x. And we have another solution that negative 7 minus the square root of 6 is also a solution for x in this equation. So we have two solutions there. Just like in number 1, we also got two solutions. Now, that's the square root method. I am leaving you with a problem to try now on your own. Good luck.